Next up, we have Kyle Barajo versus Abus Magomedov. This is going to be in the 185-pound division. Uh, this is going to be the, I believe, four or five in the main card, third or fourth. Uh, no, Kyle Barajo, obviously the natural 14-1, and one, five known as last five, coming off of that rear naked choke against Mikhail Olajajic, 30 years old. He's fighting against Abus or Abu Magomedov, um, 25-5-1. Coming off of that Sean Strickland destruction where he got KO'd, 33 years old, so he's going to be a slightly older fighter here. I think he's also going to be a larger fighter here as well, 6'2", 78-inch reach compared to 75-inch reach for Kyo, 6'1", for Kyo as well. Odds for this fight, very interesting. Minus 250 right now for Kyle Bro. He opened up at a minus 425, so... Opened up at his pretty much 4 1 favor, and now he's been bet down to minus 250. I think that this is going to be another kind of striking striker versus grappler kind of matchup. I mean, Kyle's a smart, measured grappler. Um, I think he's a step above a BJJ nerd just because he actually has good takedowns and can control his opponent on the ground in addition to going for subs. I actually think he has pretty amazing fight IQ. He will go for the boring decision win with control time if that is his best option. And you can kind of see that with his 14-1 and record. He does have a good submission game when it's open to him. You can see that in his uh, fight against Mikhail Olajajic where there's such a gap in terms of the, you know, the submission game and the striking game. Sorry, not the striking game, but the submission game. Uh, and he subbed Mikhail, but he also had a decision victory over... Armin Petrosian, uh, Mahmoud Marudov, right? So he he can't control people, and he he's not he's not gonna he's not gonna throw the sub the control time away for the sub. So he's pretty smart in that. Now, granted, I think the Kyle has had has had close fights where he does seem to be holding off for the win. He's only had one finish in the UFC so far. His his last fight, he has good movement, footwork. To level change into his takedown attempts. I think he has pretty good cardio pace to last 15 minutes. Not the greatest striker, but he is constantly improving, which is something I like as well. I think that Abu, I mean, powerful striker, great length frame for the 185 division, a lot of quick finishes on his resume, but I feel like he comes up short in a lot of these big moments, right? You can kind of see the, the one of the first introductions I had to Abu was when I watched tape of him against uh, Lewis Taylor, who's Bilal Muhammad's coach now. Lewis Taylor was old back then. He got KO'd in that PFL tourney, right? <laughs> so Abu came up short there. Then they, you know, they gave him this Sean Strickland matchup. And that was something that crazy, insane step up of competition going from Dustin Stolfisk to Sean Strickland. And they gave him a chance to really break into the, the middleweight division. Because, I mean, Abu does have really nice stand-up. I mean, his kicks are fantastic, I think. His, his, his boxing is pretty good as well. But you kind of saw in that last fight, he does seem a little hittable. And he has horrible cardio. Uh, he had a great round one against Sean Strickland. And then after that round, he just seemed to gave up. He just gave up after Sean Strickland gained a bit of momentum, and you saw what Sean Strickland did, right? He showed that there are levels to this in terms of the cardio and pace, and he also showed that, hey, your boxing might not be as good. So I personally can't trust Abu with his horrible cardio. Um, he has not been tested in the grappling department yet in the UFC, and I think he will be tested here. The pick here is Kyle. I think he's a potential parlay piece. I will hold off for now. I'll probably see on the way and see how both these guys look because Kyle has had some close fights in the UFC so far. And Abu probably coming off the lowest point in his career. So maybe this is a potential buy low on Abu. I could see Abu potentially KO in Kyle. But yeah, Kyle's the pick here for me. What are your thoughts on this fight, Gerard? Kyle. Definitely is going to be looking for that wrestling, the grappling and taking Abu down. But Magomedov might be live for the first round. And he's probably always live for the first round. So it might be harder harder for Kyle to take him down in the first round. 
um, just because Abus has his energy during that round. Then believe it or not, Abus Magomedov, he he has championship experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He, does. he went up against <laughs> Sean Strickland, who I believe in that first round looked better than Israel Adesanya against the champ. <laughs> So if you're to do MMA math, <laughs> some people might say Brian might get knocked out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but <laughs> my pick here, I'm leaning Kyle Brian just because I think he's just more well-rounded. He has the gas tank. And you tend to think uh, always bet cardio in a matchup like this. But... Maybe Abus actually uh, leveled up from having that experience and that getting him humbled and getting getting checked by now the champ. So we might see a better Magomedov, but it could also be that it's just part of his DNA to <laughs> to uh, to go go down under pressure. And this is in Brazil, too. So the crowd's going for Brio, obviously. And yeah, I, I'm leaning Kyle Brio, low to medium confidence. But if I see a round one knockout prop for Abus, I might use that to hedge, depending on how juicy that play would be. But the pick here is low to medium confidence, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I think this is going to be a interesting career turning point for either of these fighters. So interesting to see, uh, interesting to see how this fight's going to go.